Okay, welcome, Dr. Mike and Ziegler of Monarch Family Chiropractic. Welcome to workshop. Uh, we have a few workshops on healthy eating, uh, and we like to cover different topics within that umbrella and conversation. And so tonight, I'm actually excited to. Uh, jump into the conversation around reading labels uh, and really understanding what's in your food. Um, you know, we look at what's vital for health is movement, is hydration, is good food and nutrition, um, you know, is healthy thoughts and, and uh, helping manage past traumas and stresses. Um, and in chiropractic, we're looking at, do you have a nervous system that is free and clear of interference and stress that can help integrate all those components? And so I think as we dive into the topic tonight, you'll see that no wonder our health is in the state that it is in, uh, when you look at the United States, um, <clears throat> and, uh, what things you can do about it. So let's get started reading labels. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay. So I really have four simple rules for clean eating. And to start this conversation, I think it'd be beneficial for you to have a notebook and a pencil handy, uh, maybe even your phone to snapshot some of these slides. Um, but my four simple rules for clean eating, if you've ever heard of the acronym, acronym JERF, <laughs> it stands for just eat real food. You know, eat foods that look like where it came from. It came off a farm, came from God, right? Uh, that one makes sense. So we're talking meats, fruits, vegetables. I mean, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a uh, field of Cheetos growing, right? Um, I haven't seen uh, anything really that's packaged or processed. You don't see that in nature, right? So really keeping it very simple in terms of if most of the foods I'm eating are real foods, uh, stuff that's grown in the ground and stuff that looks like it came off the farm, we're doing pretty dang good. When you do look at uh, ingredients in a package, <clears throat> and we're going to look at a few here, the rule is to eat uh, an item that is packaged that has less than five ingredients, okay? And you have to be able to pronounce those ingredients and you have to know what they are. It's a great rule of thumb. Uh, and along those same lines, if you can limit uh, the amount of processed or packaged food. Uh, and I want you to really consider replacing the term processed and packaged with the verbiage of Franken food, a chemical storm, or slow drip poison. Those are pretty serious um, <laughs> words, I think, when we're talking about nutrition and food. Um, but keep those in mind because I'm going to circle back to Franken food chemical storm, slow drip poison. And I want you to make sure you're always looking at sugar on the nut nutrition facts. Um, the American Heart Association suggests that the daily sugar that we take in should be limited for women to 24 grams of sugar. That's six teaspoons. For men, it's 36 grams of sugar. Uh, for men, that's nine teaspoons. Um, we don't really have you know, a gauge as to what that means. So let's take a look. And we'll circle back to these um, is that added sugar or natural sugar? It's sugar in general. Okay, that includes your sugars you're getting from fruits. That in includes sugars you're getting from processed foods. So keep that in mind. 24 grams for women, 36 grams for men, according to the American Heart Association. Now let's just take a look at this great graphic uh, out of Vermont, where they say, let's keep Vermont healthy. The Alliance for a Healthier Vermont. So these are some common drinks that we'll see out there. You've got the Monster Energy Drink, you got Vitamin Water, Mountain Dew, Snapple, Gatorade, and then Nantucket Nectar's Cranberry Juice. Now, if we just look at those drinks, we could say, oh, some of those are maybe healthier and some of those we know are junk food. You know, maybe the Vitamin Water is a healthier choice. Maybe the Snapple Iced Tea is a healthier choice. The Gatorade, right? We're uh, told, according to the commercials, that this is what athletes should use to uh, maintain performance and uh, stay hydrated, or even this cranberry juice. But when we look at just the sugar alone and how much is contained within that one drink, 13 and a half teaspoons for the Monster, eight teaspoons for the vitamin water, 19 and 
19 and a quarter for the uh, Mountain Dew, 10 and a half teaspoons um, for the Snapple. And again, I don't have to read all of those. Um, but a lot of times we think juice is a healthier option. What we're seeing in terms of the lens that uh, we're looking at through sugar, is not necessarily the healthiest option because if we go back to what does the AHA, American Heart Association say we need to limit our sugar to 24 grams and 36 grams. Well, let's go back to teaspoon, teaspoons, six teaspoons, nine, nine teaspoons. So if we have one vitamin water or a Gatorade, then we've already reached our max if we are a dude. If we're a woman, it puts us over. So I want you to start thinking about <clears throat> what we're not only eating, but what we're consuming in terms of liquid. And what does that consist of, okay? So let's continue on. So I wanna stay on this <clears throat> discussing and talking about sugar. But before we do, we go back to my four rules of clean eating. What do I say? Five ingredients or less. You wanna make sure you can pronounce those ingredients and you know where those ingredients come from, you know what they are. So this is Coke. And we all know Coke is not a great option, but a lot of us drink it anyway. But I wanna stay with this for a second. So <clears throat> understand that when you're looking at an ingredient, um, the ingredients, the first ingredient listed is the one that is of highest content, uh, quantity, okay? Uh, then it goes lesser quantity as the list goes on. So you can gather when you're looking at the list of ingredients, the top three are the bulk of um, the ingredients of a particular drink or a particular food. So high fructose corn syrup, number one is sugar. Um, and I've got this table down below that says uh, high fructose corn syrup found in most processed foods. Uh, breads, candies, flavored yogurts, salad dressings, canned vegetables, cereals. They even put this in canned vegetables. Like they don't taste good. So we got to add some sugar to it, right? Uh, but it's highly refined. It's an artificial sweetener. Do you think anything that is artificial should be introduced into uh, an organic living, you know, bean or body? So there's going to be some impacts there. Uh, high fructose corn syrup packs on the pounds faster than any other ingredient. It increases your cholesterol levels and contributes to the development of obesity and diabetes. I would, I think we can all agree that we have a problem with obesity and diabetes, right? So that is the second um, ingredient listed on Coca-Cola. The other ingredient that I highlighted was uh, caramel coloring. And we think, oh, that sounds pretty harmless. But caramel coloring is actually a combination of sugar and ammonia, which produces carcinogens. Carcinogens are cancer causing. So um, we know that when you combine sugar and ammonia, that it is proven to cause cancer in animals and likely it does the same for humans. But I want you to look at the nutrition facts. This is the, you know, when I'm looking at nutrition facts, this is really the only box I'm looking at. I could really care less about the rest of it the stuff on the nutrition facts. Total sugars, 65 grams in this 20 ounce bottle of Coke. And you've got to look at, when you look at the, you know, sugar amount or total sugars, you've got to look at what is the serving size for, um, you know, this particular food or liquid. So we know that the serving size is one bottle. And so that within that one bottle contains that 65 grams of sugar. But sometimes, you know, a serving size may be a half a bar or two tablespoons. Uh, so you really have to understand what's the serving size and how much sugar am, am I getting within that, um, you know, that serving. Uh, yes, six ingredients. If we look at that alone and say, oh, that's better than maybe other things. But what do those ingredients contain? And I know people who drink multiple Cokes a day. Um, and I also uh, know that this is not Coke, but Pepsi. Um, I have a personal friend whose father um, was able to wean himself off of cigarettes by drinking Pepsi. So he basically went from one addiction of cigarettes to another addiction of Pepsi and drank Pepsi all day long. So again, we have to look at what is this doing to our bodies? And going back to, you know, 
high fructose corn syrup, caramel coloring, phosphoric acid. Uh, we don't really know what natural flavors are. Um, <clears throat> but are those things that come straight from the ground? And is this, you know, I said, you know, a slow drip poison. <laughs> is this a slow drip poison that we are consuming day in and day out that is slowly poisoning our bodies, poisoning our systems to create a really unhealthy internal state? Obesity, diabetes, um, chronic disease. You can umbrella that, you know, you can put any condition really in, in that framework. So let's look at one that uh, maybe has a little bit more. Oh no, this has less, this has one ingredient. This is um, simply orange, pulp-free orange juice. And again, most people think if they're choosing a juice, it's a healthier option, but we're gonna look at serving size, eight fluid ounces, which is one cup and total sugars within that cup is 23 grams. So when you're choosing juice as a healthier option, you're taking in more than what is um, recommended by the American Health Association in terms of your total daily intake of sugar. Uh, as a parent, if you're giving your child juice as a healthier option, again, you're feeding your child sugar. Uh, that's where parents say, well, water down, you know, water down the juice. And I would argue that why don't you just take an orange and squeeze it right into water, you know, or make your own orange juice. That way, you know exactly what's in, you know, in whatever it is, right? Um, <clears throat> let's keep moving along here. So one ingredient, and yet what are we looking at in terms of the nutrition facts? Total sugars and what's the serving size? Um, and I want to bring this up here. Sugar, it has countless names. These are the most common, but many more exist. So this is worth taking a picture of. There's types of sugar, types of syrups that are sugar, and there's other added sugars. All of these could be on an ingredient label um, that you may not necessarily think, oh, that's sugar, but it is sugar. Um, and will have the same impacts. Okay, so go ahead and take a snapshot of this um, <clears throat> because if you really start to look into uh, number one, the ingredients, you can actually start to highlight, oh, there's multiple forms of sugar within this packaged food. And these sugars can act differently within the body in terms of how your body cycles through it to get rid of it and how it may tax your organs. Okay, so let's look at this one, Doritos. <laughs> um, you can see this in really small lettering, but Doritos has a 4.8 rating, almost 4,300 reviews. People really like Doritos, you know? So I'm like, oh, I wanted to take something that was pretty popular and considered um, junk food. But I counted out the ingredients here and I didn't include anything that it was in parentheses. So vegetable oil, and it said this could be corn, canola, and or sunflower oil um, for the artificial colors of yellow six, yellow five, red 40. Um, I didn't count those individually. But uh, Doritos has 28 ingredients. And if we just look at, you know, common food dyes. I mean, I boxed really um, the common food dyes. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, if you see these on the label, they may say blue one, blue two, red 40, or they may also say E133, E124, E110, E102. So again, if you're looking at the ingredients and we're talking about Franken foods or chemical storms, are we going to say, well, E133 came off the farm? I think I'm feeling pretty good about eating or consuming that. But it's in a lot of stuff. Candy, cereal, soft drinks, sports drinks, pet foods, fruit cocktails, maraschino cherries, cherry pie mix, ice cream, candy, bakery foods, American cheese, macaroni and cheese. Now, as you're looking at that list, who do you think consumes a lot of those? Besides, you know, people. Kids. So artificial... Colorings may contribute to behavioral problems like ADD or ADHD in children, may lead to a significant reduction in IQ, and animal studies have linked other food colorings to cancer, which enter in red 40 and red 3. 
Red 40 is the most common dye used in America, and Red 3 is linked to thyroid tumors in rats. Uh, a ban was proposed uh, in the United States on Red 3, but it was never implemented, despite being banned entirely in the UK and Switzerland. This is in our food. And again, um, it is very highly rated by lots of people. So we know a lot of people consume this. And I bring this up because you have to understand that these ingredients these chemicals are a slow drip poison to your body, but they're very addictive. You know, we know sugar is addictive. It acts like cocaine on the brain. Um, so it's very hard to wean yourself um, of these foods, especially if you're, these ingredients are um, showing up in every food choice that you're making, right? This is just a Dorito. Um, I boxed corn um, I'm not going to go into it tonight in a lot of detail, but corn is actually uh, highly inflammatory and it's tied to um, lots of really detrimental states within the body. Um, and so I have a handout for you if you're really interested in diving down into uh, what the research says about corn. Um, but again, looking at Doritos, what's the top three ingredients here? Corn, vegetable oil, and maldextrin. Mal maltodextrin, which is sugar. So um, again, not a high quality food. And just think about your food. That is what your body's using as building blocks to grow healthy tissue, to regenerate cells, right? So if this is what we're giving our body to do that, no wonder we are in a health crisis. But we don't see it in the first couple of years, maybe not even the first decade or two. But we see it later on around 30 to 40 is when you just I mean, it might not be an intentional decision, but what you're doing at around 30 years old to 40 years old is really setting a foundation for what the next 20, 30 years are looking like. OK, kiddos can recover <laughs> to a degree, but again, it impacts the brain. If we just look at what these dyes do, you know, we have um, moms who are reading the ingredient labels like a hawk because they know red 40 sets up their kiddos. And if it's setting off these uh, sensitive kids, we may not be experiencing it outwardly, but it does impact the body. So let's move on here. So peanut butter, everyone loves peanut butter. I love peanut butter. So Skippy here, roasted peanuts, sugar, hydrogenated vegetable oil. So there's those vegetable oils again, cottonseed, soybean, and rapeseed oil to prevent separation because we like it creamy and we don't want to mix our peanut butter, right? Um, so it's three ingredients. So that covers the clean, clean eating rule, right? Um, <clears throat> but my concern is sugar is the second ingredient and then these vegetable oils. But there's some people who think I want reduced fat because what I've been told is fat is the bad guy, okay? Anything that labels, uh, an item low fat, reduced fat, light, understand that fat has been reduced at the cost of adding sugars or adding chemicals or additives. So let's look at the ingredients in reduced fat GIF. There's 16 ingredients here. Peanuts, corn syrup, solid sugar, pea protein. And they say it contains 2% or less of, which, okay, that makes it better because it's 2% less. But if I'm drinking water and it says, you have 2% less of gasoline or oil, do I wanna drink that water? No. It still has an impact in the body, right? Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know, contains 2% less of all these other things. I mean, I don't know about you, but what does mono and diglycerides look like? What does orthophosphate look like? Zinc oxide, isn't that something that they put in sunblock? <laughs> you know what I mean? And again, who eats a lot of peanut butter? Our kids. So that's where... I just really want you to start looking at the ingredients and really following the clean, you know, clean eating rules. If it's five or less and you can pronounce them and you know what they are, you're in better shape to set yourself up to succeed. Okay, so, um, you know, these companies have and put billions of dollars into their marketing teams to get our attention. 
And so these are the marketing terms out there associated with improved health, which misleads the consumer, which misleads us into thinking something that is unhealthy and processed is good for us. So we've all seen these light, multigrain, natural, even organic, right? Organic sugar is still organic sugar. Organic products are, um, you know, if we know that they are just not the best for us anyway, <laughs> they, organic or not is still going to be impacted, right? And why does our turkey or our chicken or our hamburger need to be labeled natural? By golly, they should be natural, right? No added sugar, low calorie, low carb, low, I got low carb there twice, made with whole grains, fortified or enriched, gluten-free, fruit flavored, zeros trans fat, fat free. All of these are marketing terms that are trying to buy for us consumers to buy the product thinking it's healthy. Okay, so we got these fruit snacks over here that say it's made with real fruit. And we've got the cottage cheese that's, you know, low fat or the Pringles that are multi-grain, right? So I just really want you to shift your lens around the foods and products that you're purchasing and know that everyone's vying for our attention. And they spend, these food conglomerates spend a lot of money for us to purchase their food. I mean, don't even get me started to look at cereals um, and what they do to create these colors and beautiful cartoons to get kiddos to want it, right? It's like, they're not marketing to parents out there, they're marketing to our kids. So if it's colorful and flashy and if it looks fun, then guess what? That's, that's the food item our kids want. Um, so understand that there's so much more that goes into our food and selling our food to us um, that I like to just slap a label on these and say, this is Franken food and this is slow drip poison. This is a chemical storm for you. If you continue to consume it day in and day out for every meal, um, 20, 30 years from now, you're talking about a different state of health. So how to navigate eating foods that aren't like they show up in nature. So there's packaged processed foods. Again, five ingredients or less. And they're listed in the order of highest quantity. So the first ingredient listed is the main ingredient. You can pronounce all the ingredients and you know them. Look at the nutrition facts. This is the only thing I care about. Sugar. How much sugar is in there? And what is the serving size? And then my absolute no-no no, no list of ingredients, vegetable oils. If you look at any of the docs out there who are big on education, they have a more functional medicine background or even um, more of a, I would say, functional medicine, nutrition. Um, these guys are saying vegetable oils are the worst thing we could consume. We don't even know the impacts of vegetable oils on our bodies at this point. And it's in everything. It is canola, it is soybean, it is corn, it is sunflower, it is um, grape seed oil. These are in everything. I am looking at my ingredients like a hawk. Does this have any of these vegetables oil oils in it? I see it in tortilla chips. I see it in breads. I see it in um, like nut milks. I see it in everything. So just start looking at your ingredient list and see what you find. These are my no-no. I don't want to consume this. They're highly inflammatory. Um, we'll probably do a workshop on seed oils and vegetable oils at some point down the road. Anything that's conventionally grown is my, on my no-no list. Uh, that is corn, soy, sugar beets, or canola. Um, <clears throat> these are genetically modified seed. And genetically modified seed is not a seed that's recognized in nature. It's not a hybrid. It's genetically modified. Um, and they... In order to grow these crops, they use a ton of glyphosate or Roundup, which is a weed killer that's used everywhere. And the impacts that we're seeing on glyphosate and our bodies are uh, really concerning. We have to work really hard to keep these toxins and chemicals out of our systems. Um, so I'm just, if it's conventionally grown and it's corn, soy, sugar beets, or canola, that is uh, the main GMO products. And again, we know that corn, soy, sugar 
canola is a vegetable oil. Uh, we know that those are used as fillers in a lot of processed and packaged foods. And anything that's a chemical on dye, I don't want that in my food. So those are my absolute no-no list of ingredients. So when you start looking, you're looking at sugar, you're looking at how many ingredients and what's within those ingredients. And what's the better option? The best thing you can do is make your food at home. And some people say, well, how? How do I do this? <laughs> how do I live, right? Yeah. This, these processed and packaged foods are cheaper. They're more cheaply made, less nutrient dense. They're worse for our body. So it's, do I invest, invest in it now or do I do it later down the road where I'm investing in healthcare to address the chronic disease I'm dealing with, right? Um, but I really like to think about the 80-20 rule. You know, if 80% of the time you are consistent with your choices, you are eating at home, you are making your own foods, um, the other 20%, you're good, you're okay. It's a pretty solid, solid rule there. But I should have put, you know, the 80-20 rule because it's really hard to um, live within, you know, this strict boundary and it's almost like a slave to it. And then at some point you say, I can't do it anymore, right? So um, it's okay to eat these foods. It's just, if that's what you're consuming day in and day out, majority of the time, it's gonna become a problem. It's going to catch up with you. And this is where I wanna leave it. Um, <clears throat> a question on the quiz that we find that a lot of people are getting wrong is um, how quickly does messaging between the brain and the body happen in miles per hour? We call it the speed of life. We get all sorts of guesses, um, but the range is between 270 and 300 miles per hour. That's how quickly our brain's talking to the body and vice versa. So if you're experiencing symptoms, that means there's 60% stress to your system, 60% stress to a brain if you're experiencing symptoms. And that's how much it takes to get a symptom or an expression in your body. So that means that speed of life drops from 300 miles an hour to just over 100. So if you're feeling like a little slower, if you're feeling lethargic or fatigued, if you're, if you're just not responsive or adaptive, that there's a reason for it. And I go back to where I started. We look at how is there stress to the brain and nervous system and how it integrates all things you're doing in terms of health. Subluxation is a slow drip poison over time. Just like the food you eat and what you choose to do can either work for you and support a higher expression of health or they can slowly poison you over time. We must imagine that getting older doesn't inevitably mean getting weaker, slower, sicker, feebler, or more dependent. Almost everyone knows someone in their 90s who still dances, cooks, drives, spends time with loved ones, reads book, does puzzles, and thoroughly enjoys being alive. It shouldn't be an anomaly, but the norm, and it is the norm. But based on the health and state of our country and the world and how we consume in every way, not just food, it has become the norm. But it's not normal. It's common. The normal is health. The normal is what is shared in this quote. So to you who are getting chiropractic care and taking stress off of your brain to allow yourself to think more clearly and make better choices for you and your family, congratulations and good job in that investment in time and money in every way because you are gonna be more open to making better choices when it comes to, your, to you know, the rules of clean eating. You're going to think through, you know, do I have time and do I have energy to make food tonight? And do I have time and energy to, you know, educate my children on making better food choices? Because it starts with you. Um, so thank you for being here tonight. I really value and appreciate your choice to spend the, the half hour with us to learn how to create um, healthier choices in your day-to-day. -day. I hope this has given you um, some tools for when you're out grocery shopping. And I would love to hear um, how you utilize it in your next week. Uh, so please share with us your takeaways. 
um, share with us your experiences. And really, you know, when we talk about our 100 goals, which are due February 9th, um, so next Thursday, I hope this would potentially be a goal for you. You know, I want to eat in more than I eat out. I want to look at my ingredients and consume less sugar over time, right? So uh, Dr. Maya Kinzigler, Monarch Family Chiropractic, and um, my hope is that if you found value in this, that you share what you know, because more people need to know um, that there's a place out there that can really uh, support growth and health and support education and um a lot of times it's through you. So please share what you know. Invite somebody to your next workshop or in the office and we'll see you next week. Let's see.